Levy wakes up exhausted in his new apartment and tries to get himself together. While wandering through the mess, he finds an object made of quartz. He sees a man riding a scooter outside. He goes to meet the man and asks him for a cigarette. The man's name is John, and he has recently gotten a divorce. Levy explains that he arrived in Los Angeles just a few hours ago. He sold the last place he was staying in, including the furniture, and found this new apartment online. So, Levy doesn't have any furniture in his new flat. John was about to donate some of his ex-husband's furniture, so he offers it to Levy. Levy appreciates it and accepts John's offer. Levy tells John that he works at a bar and how crazy it can get over there, sometimes. The two bond over a discussion about the history of the building in which Levy is staying. While John helps Levy move the furniture into his apartment, Levy shares his experiences as a spear fisher. After they are done, Levy wants to thank John by having a drink with him, but he is surprised to know that John is sober. Before John leaves, he experiences a supernatural phenomenon. A crystal object floats into the air and begins emitting light. John is stunned. Before Levy can experience it too, the crystal goes back to its original place. Not wanting Levy to worry about anything, John chooses not to tell him about the strange incident. When John goes to leave again, the crystal begins to levitate in the air and shines brightly. There to witness it this time, Levy is shocked by the sight. John and Levy are in awe of what they have just discovered. Both of them talk about how long humanity has existed. They find it strange that even with the rapid technological advances the world has been experiencing lately, no one has caught a supernatural phenomenon on camera. Levy says that he hasn't accomplished much in life. The most he has ever done is travel and move from one city to another. Suddenly, he realizes that what they have just found could be worth more than gold. Levy asks John what they should do with their unusual discovery. John suggests that they should open up a YouTube channel, but Levy rejects the idea. No one would believe them or take them seriously if they did that. They agree that their best bet is to make a documentary about it. Levy asks John if there are any potential dangers, like the crystal attacking them. John doesn't think they have anything to worry about. Levy tells John that he has to leave for work, and John notices that Levy leaves with some woman. John and Levy are giving an interview for their documentary. John shares that he came to Los Angeles and found his husband, who he later divorced. John tells them that he always wanted to be a photographer, but never found success in the field. He, later on, became a math teacher. Even though he was good at it, he didn't find success there either. John hopes to find success with this documentary. Otherwise, he would be forced to live with his grandmother. John thinks Levy is a little secretive. Both John and Levy are setting up cameras in Levy's apartment, so they can catch the crystal floating on camera. John wonders if they will be able to complete the documentary. Then, he starts thinking about how much they could get after selling it to a movie or documentary distributor. John has come up with a name for their documentary, Something in the Light. Levy has also come up with a documentary name of his own, The Door That Wouldn't Shut, inspired by when he found out that his apartment's door doesn't close properly. John has set up his camera properly, but Levy has a tough time setting up his. While Levy is having a drink in his kitchen, John witnesses the crystal float in the air again. He notices that the light radiating from the crystal is forming a certain shape on the wall. The TV in the apartment is also being affected by the crystal. Levy, who is now in the room, forgets to record the footage in time. When he finally gets around to it, the crystal falls back into its place. John is angry at the fact that his camera overheated and the SD card got full. Levy was able to record some footage, but it is of no worth, since the camera didn't focus on the crystal. They got no footage of the event. Levy suggests that they need to get better equipment if they really want to make this documentary. Levy also says that they should divide tasks between each other and should take turns in recording the crystal. John becomes worried about being attacked by a supernatural entity, but Levy tells him not to think about that. Later that night, John roams around the city looking for different clues that could point him toward the explanation of the phenomenon. While he is on the phone with one of his relatives, John searches about Levy on the internet and finds that Levy is an associable person. Even though he is not on social media a lot, John is stunned to find a harassment case related to Levy. Before he could look further into it, Levy arrives at his doorstep. Levy has got much better equipment for recording the documentary. As both of them set up the gear in the apartment, Levy thinks John is acting weird. John asks Levy about the woman he was with the other day, and Levy tells him that she is his probation officer. Upon asking what Levy did in the past that lead him to his current position, Levy assumes that John has read about him online. Levy explains that he once worked at a bar. During one of his shifts, he had to use the bathroom. As there wasn't one nearby, he decided to go in an alley. A police officer came and arrested him. Levy, later on, found out that the alley he was in was the backside of a daycare center. Levy was charged with pedophilia allegations, even though he didn't do anything wrong. John is relieved that there's nothing serious going on with Levy. The supernatural phenomena occur again. This time, both of them record everything. John takes pictures of the shape that is being formed on the wall. Levy asks John about it, and John answers that he had read a geometry book in the past that had the same symbol on the book cover as the one being formed on the wall now. 
John yells out in the apartment, asking if there's anything unholy present with him, but nothing happens. For days, John tries to link the shape with different symbols he finds across Los Angeles. John says that the shapes represent an irrational number, and assumes that there might be some irrationality in the apartment that is making the crystal float in the air. For the next many days, John studies this supernatural phenomenon from a physics perspective. When they aren't working, Levy tells John that he had dreamt of accomplishing so much in life, but has failed to do so far. On Christmas Day, both of them encounter another phenomenon. They find the studio light flying in the air in another room. Meanwhile, John and Levy bring in specialists for the documentary. All of them are confused and still don't know what both of them are trying to accomplish with this supernatural discovery. John thinks someone or something is trying to get in contact with them. When John finds the studio light in the air again, he puts a small flashlight on his head. He is surprised to find that the studio light mimics what John is doing with his own flashlight. As days go on, quartz begins to grow in the apartment. Both John and Levy are hoping to make it big with this documentary before they die, so they can finally say they have accomplished something meaningful. Levy thinks that there might be something in his apartment, so he goes to look under it. Surprisingly, he finds an old recorder. When they play it, they hear someone named William Thompson speaking. Initially, none of them can figure out who it is. But when Levy goes to a park, he finds an old plaque dedicated William Thompson, who used to be a city planner. Levy and John are hopeful that this might lead to something. William died in 1908, so John and Levy try to find something of value that happened that year. John tries to find a location in the city with coordinates of this number, and it leads them to the top of a hill. Levy is able to find a strip that has a link to a certain web page. Unfortunately, the website has nothing to offer them. Not having anything to do at the moment, Levy decides to play guitar. When he plays it, the crystal responds with a similar symphony of its own and begins floating in the air. John tells Levy to play again. When he does, the crystal floats in the air again and releases a similar sound. When Levy plays a harsh guitar note, the crystal makes a high-pitched noise. John and Levy haven't figured anything out yet. The ones that were brought in for the documentary still don't know what is going on. Levy believes that aliens might be linked to this phenomenon, though he doesn't know how. In the next many days, nothing happens with the crystal. While they talk, Levy notices that his small cactus plant in the apartment has grown a fruit. Levy searches on the internet and concludes that cactuses can't grow fruit. When John cuts open the fruit, he finds that the inside of the fruit might contain Morse code. John tries to link the Pythagorean theorem in the entire neighborhood with the shape he and Levy discovered. During this process, he begins to find more instances of Morse code. John discovers the location of a specific place after working out the Morse code, and after visiting that place, he and Levy find a book that is completely covered with black marker. Worried that the crystal might be emitting dangerous radioactive waves, John tries to do deep research. After taking safety protocols, he tries to find if the crystal actually does emit dangerous waves. One night, everything in the apartment begins to float. John and Levy, who haven't been getting anywhere with their research, are even more perplexed. Upon looking at the security camera footage, Levy finds that John was going through his legal documents. Levy is furious at John. Levy opens up about his sister. He stole something from her once and got in trouble for it. Soon enough, the argument heats up. Both of them accuse each other of being failures. John tries to abandon the documentary, but before he can leave, he feels a heavy earthquake inside his car, and the radio turns onto the 1908 station. John goes back inside the apartment and finds Levy, who also felt the earthquake. John realizes that they might be close to figuring out the phenomenon. They agree to put their differences aside and finish this documentary once and for all. John decides to sleep in the apartment for the night. To his shock, he wakes up in the middle of the night and finds himself levitating. He falls back down shortly after. He goes to check in on Levy but can't find him in the apartment. John gets the feeling that something might be wrong. He goes outside and is terrified to see Levy levitating far above in the sky. The crystal, which was also afloat, falls and breaks. Levy falls soon after and passes away on the spot. Those working on the documentary are still confused as to what John and Levy had discovered and what it actually meant. There is no footage left, the hard drives overheated. When a reporter asks about the phenomenon and Levy's demise, John simply answers that his calculations were off.